Welcome back Algebra 2. Let's talk a little bit more geometry today in Lesson 124. We're going to discuss conditions of congruence right now. There are four main conditions of congruence that you need to be worried about in regards to triangles. The first is side 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 which we indicate with SSS. If the lengths of the sides in one triangle are equal to the lengths of the sides in a second triangle, the triangles are congruent. And we call this condition side, 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 or SSS. So if this side is equal to this side, and this side is equal to this side, and this side is equal to this side, then they have to be congruent. Because when you have lengths of legs that are the same size, they can only go together in one way. And when their locations are congruent to one another, they have to be um, congruent. Congruent is the geometric form of equal. We uh, Congruent is written like this. We have the two lines, the equal, but then this up here. So it's basically saying that it's approximately equal because that's the approximate symbol, um, but it also means congruent in size and shape. So equal in size and shape, the word we use for that is congruent. So remember, congruent pretty much means equal. But when we do proofs in geometry, we don't use equal, we use congruent when we talk about shapes. All right, the second kind is angle, 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 side. And you can see from the illustration what that looks like. If the angles in one triangle have the same measures all the way around as the angles in the second triangle, um, the similar, the, the triangles are similar, right? Not congruent. Uh, what that means is you can have the same three angles, but have different length legs, right? This could be, you know, we've done the scaled up and scaled down versions of triangles. You could have similar triangles, but for them to be congruent, at least one of the legs is going to be the same length. Because if one of the legs are the same length, then the other two legs have to be the same length in order for all three of those angles to be congruent. So when we have angle, 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 side, all measuring the same, excuse me, the triangles are congruent, not just similar. The third condition is side, angle, side. And that's where we have two sides and the angle that is created by those two sides are, they have the same measures. So here, X and W, the lengths of those sides are the same and the lengths of sides y and z are the same, and the angle that they create between x and y and w and z, those two angles have the same measurement as well. So because of that, this length has to be the same, and these angles have to match up as well and be congruent. So therefore, that is the condition side angle side, and that makes these two angles congruent angles. All right, the fourth condition applies to right triangles only, and that is called the HL, or the hypotenuse leg. If the length of the hypotenuse and a leg in one right triangle, that is the one of the legs here or here, so if A was equal to B, or A could have been here and equal to B, it doesn't matter, um, but if one of the legs and the hypotenuse are the same length in a right triangle, uh, we know that they're going to be congruent because it's a right triangle. We already know that one of the angles is the same. So it's kind of like side angle side, but for a right triangle, we call it hypotenuse leg. Uh, specifically, if this leg is, if the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse here measure the same. So um, don't let it confuse you when you're dealing with right triangles. It is side angle side, but it's not side angle side. Side angle side is the angle created by the two legs here. Um, because the right triangle, we know it has this one degree here. We know that if another leg and the hypotenuse are the same, then these, then this angle has to be the same as well. All right, so side angle side is in the order that it is written, side angle side. This is angle side side, right? If we were to write it, it'd be angle side side. We don't want to write that word. No, that's not nice. 
No, so we, we want to call that hypotenuse leg instead. All right, now given this will be the same measurement as this one, it will. And if you're using the degree of this angle, this length and this leg, then you could say that was side angle side. But if you don't have the degree of measure here to prove that this angle is equal to this angle, we're going to use this one, which would then be hypotenuse leg. All right, so don't let that uh, confuse you. All right, my Algebra 2 students, um, we are going to start writing proofs. We are going to do proofs of congruence at the tail end of this Algebra 2 year. So many proofs require that we show that two segments have equal lengths or that two angles have equal measures. And this is often accomplished by showing that the two angles are congruent. So that the, two, the, the two components have equal measures because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And we call that. That is an actual thing. It is CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So if you can remember that, put that in your notes. Um, if we outline a proof first, writing the formal proof becomes easier. To outline a proof, we first sketch the figure and use tick marks to record the given information on the figure. Then we write the statement of congruence, being careful to make sure we list the vertices in corresponding order. Then we write either angle, 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 side, 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 angle, side, or hypotenuse leg to show why the triangles are congruent. So let's jump into one. I'm going to write these out so we don't forget. Um, that's congruent parts of a congruent triangle are congruent. Um, this, the four that we talked about were angle, 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 side, 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 angle, side, and hypotenuse leg. All right, those are the four that we talked about. So in problem 124.1, we're going to go ahead and jump into an example and start writing some proofs. We have a isosceles triangle here. Let me see if I can draw it for us right quick. Make it look somewhat. There we go. I don't like the shading, so I'm going to take that off. It gets in the way. And I'm going to draw a line bisecting. And bisecting means to cut something directly in half, as you probably remember from lesson 123. So here we have, this is point, or angle A, then this is B, this is C, and this is D. And here are our instructions. Given that line AD, or side AD, is congruent to side DB, um, and side DC is perpendicular, that's a little perpendicular sign, to AB, to side AB, we are going to outline a proof that shows and this is what your last statement of your proof is going to have to be. That's how you get from, you have to start here and get to here. That's how we write a proof. We're going to prove that line or side AC is congruent to side BC. Okay? These are our instructions on the proof. And right now we're just going to outline it. Okay? So our solution consists of taking our givens and tick marking the figure and then outlining what we have. So we have here that AD and DB are congruent because they're bisected. They have to be congruent. So this one is congruent to this one, right? Because this is bisected and these are perpendicular, this is a 90 degree angle and this is a 90 degree angle. 
So these two are perpendicular here, right? So this becomes a right triangle, A, D, C, and this becomes a right triangle, B, D, C, with D as the vertex in the center. So triangle ADC, because this side here is the same side, DC is the same for this triangle as it is for this triangle, we have side, angle, side, right? So because a triangle ADC is congruent to triangle uh, B, remember we have to have the vertex, the angle in the middle in the same place, so B, D, C, that is going to be by the SAS, side, angle, side, side, angle, side, right? So that's a congruency thing. So we have two similar triangles, uh, two congruent triangles here based on side, angle, side. So now congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So the congruent parts of these two triangles are the hypotenuse of the right triangles. Because if the two sides are the same uh, of a 90 degree triangle, then we know the hypotenuses are congruent as well. So these are congruent. So we can say, therefore, the angle A or the side AC is congruent to side BC. And that is by congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And that is our outline of our proof. And that's all we're going to do with this right now. We're just giving our logic. Why are these two congruent? Well, because side, angle, side, these are two congruent triangles. So therefore, these two have to be the same. It's not super difficult. It just means that you have to um, explain your reasoning and understand the, the way triangles work. Um, if you go into Algebra 3 next year, you're going to be doing some trigonometry, which is the study of triangles. And you'll be spending a lot more time on this in particular, um, this, uh, figuring out how they work together and when they're congruent and how to measure them and all the different cool things that triangles can do and how they are indeed a basis for all geometry. So let's move on to our second example problem. All right. And I am going to, yeah, I'm going to clear all of this because we're going to do so. I'm going to leave this up though, because we'll need that reference. So this is going to be 124.2. And this is a wonky shape. Let me see if I can do it right. All right, you have one like that. And I do not like the shading, as I've said before. It's not exactly the same. There we go, that's much better. All right, so now within this, we have an angle here. Right about yay. And another angle come down the other side. And in the book, these are exactly the same distance apart. So that looks really close. I'm going to leave that right there. All right. And this is D. This is E, F, G, and H. Uh, and here, let me write our proof up here. All right. Here we go. We have uh, the proof written out for us. The measure of angle E is congruent to the measure of angle H, and line EF is congruent to line GH. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put that congruency onto our figure. So the measure of angle E is congruent to the measure of angle F. So, or sorry, gee, I don't like that first one I did. So E and H are congruent. 
So there's our tick mark. Excuse me for that. And now we're going to show that side EF is congruent to GH. So we're going to put a tick mark here and a tick mark here. So we have those two sides. Um, so if we can show that triangle EFD is congruent to HGD, then ED will be congruent to HD by CPTC. So what we're going to do is we're going to show that triangle, it'd be good if I could draw one, EFD is congruent to triangle uh, HGD. Okay. And we know that because we have this one line in between that has the same measure, so it separates them. And this point D here is above it. So if this is the same length, and if D is centered to FG, then we know that those two, these two angles here are going to be the same. All right? These two angles being the same proves it, actually. And this is by side, angle, side. So side, angle, side. So we have side angle, and because of this, we have another side, okay? Because this makes it have to be over the center. Um, so then we can say that DF, the measure of DF, is congruent to the measure of DG because of congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, because we know that this is the same length, this is the same length, this is the same degree of measure, and this is the same degree of measure. This has to be over the center, which then makes this one congruent to this one. And if you have side angle side in each one of these, then these two are going to be congruent because they are congruent parts of the same triangle. Okay. All right, so let's move on to isosceles triangles. Let me clear the page completely this time. There are several basic proofs about isosceles triangles. Each proof requires that we show then an isosceles triangle can be separated into two congruent triangles. We're going to outline a proof that shows the base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal. Iso means equal, and skelos means legs. So the isosceles triangle is defined to be a triangle that has two sides whose legs are equal. So let's draw an isosceles triangle here. And basically, the way you draw an isosceles triangle is you have a base, right? But then you have to, however long your legs of your triangle above the base are, the point has to be centered over the base in order for these two to be the same length. Because what that means is that this is bisecting it, so where they come together is exactly half of the base at the top. So that, by definition of an isosceles triangle, that's what I was saying with the iso and the scalos. Because we know these two legs are the same length, we know this is over the center. All right, so here's what we're going to do. In the, um, this is going to be a triangle ABC, we are going to draw a um, bisecting line from the top center to the bottom center which is going to be perpendicular to the base, which will create two right triangles here. So that means that A and C are congruent, and we're going to call this D down here, and that means AD and DC are congruent, and we know that D is its own, it's congruent 
to this triangle and it's congruent to this triangle because it's the same line. So we are going to say triangle ADB, I always forget about that, is congruent to triangle BDC. And you got to put your vertex in the middle so that it is the same triangle and the parts correspond. And that's going to be by side, 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 right? Because we have denoted these sides are the same, these sides are the same, and these sides are the same because they are the same side. So that means that the measure of angle BAD is congruent to the measure of angle B. CD, and that is because congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. In the right hand figure, we have drawn a line between the vertex B and point D, which is the midpoint of AC, so AD has to have the same length as DC. The segment BD, right in the middle, is a side of both of the small triangles, so the triangles are congruent by side, side, side. When we write the statement of congruence, we are careful to list the vertices of equal angles in the same order. You have to put the verte vertex of this triangle has to be in the middle of each so that they are the same triangle. And then we have to put the vertices that match up here in the same spot. So in this case, BAD went to that outside angle first, so BAD. So we have to do it for this one as well. BCD. We went to that outside angle. We couldn't call it BDC because then the angle, the degree here would be 90, not whatever C is. And C is the one that we are saying is the same as A. All right, that's why you have to have the angle that you're talking about, the degree of measure, in the middle. That's very important. Otherwise, the proof will be incorrect. It's not just enough to get the right letters. The letters have to be in the right order. All right. So let's keep this drawing here. And we're going to talk about just a little bit different... Um, a little bit different type of congruency with it. We're going to outline a proof that shows that if two angles of a triangle are equal, so if two angles of a triangle are equal, the triangle is an isosceles. All right, so if two angles of a triangle are equal, it's an isosceles triangle. So uh, let's begin. We have A and C are equal. We have these two set equal to one another. Um, and we have, if this is bisected at the top, then we know that this angle is the same as this angle as well. So if this angle is the same, and 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 these are both right triangles, right angles here, they're the same, and they share the same side, then we know that triangle ADB, you got to get that vertex in the right spot, is congruent to triangle uh, B, D, C, because of angle, 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 side. Because these two angles are the same because this was bisected. Because this was bisected, we have two right triangles, which, because it's an isosceles, that means these two are going to be the same degree of measure. Uh, so that's angle, 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 side, because they share a side. Okay, and so because of that, we know that the length of AB is going to be congruent to the length of 
CB because congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We know we are going to need two triangles for the proof. Thus in the center we draw median BD so that we can show the triangles congruent by side angle side. But this does not work because in side angle side the angle must be between the sides. So we try again. And in the right hand figure we form the two triangles by bisecting angle B. So that's where we get that other angle right here. We have to include that. The two angles in ADB have the same measures as the two angles as CDB. So the third angles have to be equal as well. Therefore, the triangles are similar by angle, angle, angle. And side DB is the side in both triangles. And it is, um, and is opposite equal angles. Thus, the scale factor is 1. So the triangles are congruent by angle, 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 side. Since the triangles are congruent, AB and CB are congruent as well. This tells us that triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle. All right, one more, and I'm going to redraw this triangle because we have just about used it all up, so I'm going to clear the page. And um, we need to prove that the bisector of the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is perpendicular to the base. So we're going to draw another isosceles triangle here. I love this software for this because it's so um, it's so user friendly. I just hold it for a second and it pops the shape I need right in there. This is called Good Notes if anybody is interested. All right, so we're going to prove that the prove the bisector of the vertex. angle. I know my handwriting is really terrible. Y'all just forgive me of this. It's just a miracle I spelled isosceles correctly. So prove that the bisector of the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is perpendicular to the base. That was just way faster than me trying to spell perpendicular. Just trust me on that. So this one is easy. Um, we show the isosceles triangle here, and it is going to be labeled A, B, C. All right. Uh, and we're going to bisect angle B with this line here. So it's right in the middle, and this is going to be point D just like before. Now we know this one is the same and this one is the same and this of course is the same for both sides. It's its own side. Now because it bisected these two angles are going to be the same degree of measure. So we can say that triangle A, B, D uh, is congruent, sorry, I got that in the wrong order. That's not good. So it's angle triangle ADB because we're talking about the angle here being perpendicular. ADB is going to be congruent to CDB. I got to keep that D in the middle. And that's by side angle side. Right? So that in itself tells us that this is because this is congruent, this is congruent We've got side, angle, side. So therefore, these two are congruent. That's what, it, that's what it's telling us. Because we have side, angle, side here, these triangles are similar triangles, which by default means congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So the measure of angle ADB must be congruent to the measure of CDB. And that's congruent parts, congruent triangles are congruent. Because we've proven that they're similar triangles, um, so therefore these must be similar measures. And that would be all we have. Thus, BD 
is perpendicular to um, AC. Because these are both little right triangles. Ta-da! All right. And then, by the way, proving that ADB and BDC are indeed perpendicular or are indeed the same degree of measure here. Uh, that means they have to be perpendicular because when you have this line and this line, opposite angles are going to be equal. So if this these two angles here, if we were to extend this, if these two angles are equal and these two angles were equal, but then these two angles are equal, they all have to be equal. And the only way that can happen is if you have two perpendicular lines. They all have to be 90 degrees. And that is why that proves that BD is perpendicular to AC. So you have to look at it like that. All right, that's all I have for lesson 124. I will see you in lesson 125. After 125, we have four more lessons and we are done with Algebra 2. I know y'all are excited. That is one more week of lessons and we're finished for the year. All right, and I will see you in lesson 125.